I love riding in the city. I love riding at night. And I love wearing all black. It's a dangerous combination, but I'm not sold on reflective garments. Drivers aren't always looking for them, and they take time to register as an obstacle. This poses some safety concerns. Let's fix that. Ten years ago to the day, I was in an accident. But rather than a bicycle and a van blowing through a stop sign, it was a motorcycle and a pickup truck at 50 miles an hour. I came to on the side of the road, saw my bike, and slowly sat up as best I could. I looked at my hands, assessing the damage. I was terrified to try moving my legs as I assumed at that point I was paralyzed. After successfully wiggling my toes, a wave of relief rushed over me, but it was short-lived and I was still in shock. I couldn't speak. The wind had been completely knocked out of me. A man came over and placed a wet shirt on my forehead to cool me down. I heard sirens, blacked out, and was whisked away. For the next four and a half hours, I fell in and out of consciousness, thankfully holding on. Clearly, what you just saw was a dramatic reenactment of the accident I was in, but it did actually happen. Thankfully, I walked away with just a concussion and this key right here. It broke off in the ignition and was given to me by the tow truck driver when I went to pick up the bike from impound. I wear it each day as my reminder of the gift of life and the second chance I got. And now, as the 10th anniversary of that accident is approaching, I got to thinking, what can I do now that I'm in a city and I bike a lot, particularly at night, to keep myself safe? As you may have noticed in my past videos, I wear all black, and that's not just for the camera or something like that. I do that every day. My closet looks like a cartoon character's where you just kind of pick one off the hanger. It's got black shirt and black pants on it, and then there's 18 other sets of the exact same thing. I'm not going to stop wearing black, though, and I don't want to carry around a set of highlighter colored clothes just for night riding. So I'm going to add some LEDs to my backpack. I got a battery, add a power cord, slap them together, and you got a backpack that lights up. Hopefully, it prevents my death one day. Hopefully, we never get to that point where it has to prevent my death one day. But if it has to, then I'd rather it do it than not do it. As demonstrated by that clap earlier, this is going to be a really simple build. I've got my backpack here with plenty of space to mount some lights to. I've chosen to go with two trailer lights meant for an actual car trailer. They are ultrasonically welded, which means they're sealed decently against rain. To attach those, I've got this dual lock strip from 3M. It's like Velcro, but instead of hook and loop, it's got these interlocking plastic nubs. This version is adhesive back, which I'll put on the lights. And then I shortly should have a set of non-adhesive back strips arriving that I will use this E6000 adhesive to glue to the backpack. The standard strip adhesive doesn't work. To power it all, I have this Talent Cell LifePo battery. Lithium ion batteries do have some safety concerns with them, especially with impact. LifePo batteries specifically have less of a chance of that. So if I ever do get in a wreck, I should be pretty safe. I hope. There are two things at this point which I'm unsure of regarding this build. One is, will the battery properly power the trailer lights? And two is, will the E6000 properly stick the dual lock strip to the rubbery material of my backpack. I don't have time to make a little test patch and then glue on the full thing. So I'm just gonna try it all at once and hope I don't ruin my backpack. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Here's the running lights in the dark. And there's the braking lights. Of course it says do not remove on these stickers. But I like to void warranties. Goo gone. A little cleaner to gone the goo gone. I want to make sure this dual lock covers as much of this surface as possible for the maximum hold. You might recall taking a rubbing of something with a pencil 
to get its shape. As I work on the placement of these lights, I realized I forgot to address one crucial thing during my planning. They operate off of 12 volts, but I don't know how many amps they draw when they're on. So I need to check that with my multimeter before I go making an extension cable to connect to both lights. Otherwise I could overdraw the current through the cable, melt something, short something out later, set my backpack on fire. 141 million. Wow, this battery is going to last forever. I have no worries now. I can use the wire I have. What am I doing? Can I get it? No. It's been too long since I've been able to say this. Cthulhu! Oh my gosh, people want to talk to me again? Who has time to talk when you have to improve your backpack visibility? Turns out I wired this up at the wrong ends. I meant to use male, but instead I used female. The reason you'd want that is a safety issue. If I have this male to male cable plugged in, which came with the battery, and then turn it on, this end is now live and relatively exposed. So instead you use a male to female end and you plug your currently no powered device into it with a male connector. That means that these only gain power and complete the circuit when everything is closed off. A quick tip for splicing a lot of wires together, get them close with the alligator clips, strip back the jacket on a piece of stranded wire, remove an individual strand, and then tie the ends all together. It'll make soldering a lot easier. Both lights harnessed together. We've got high and low, and the two inch wide dual lock arrived. While I'm gluing these on, I don't want them attached to the lights because the E6000 might fuse them together if it runs over the edge. So instead, I've cut out a template from a chocolate Cheerios box that I'll use in place of this just to kind of get everything aligned right. Inside this pocket, I have a book and I'm gonna use these batteries to act as clamps while the E6000 cures. I'm scoring the back of the dual lock because it's really smooth and I wanna give the E6000 as much of a chance to grip properly as I can. I'm gonna leave the backpack itself unscored and unsanded. In the event it doesn't work at all, I'll still have a decent looking backpack if I scrape off the E6000. Probably should have got something to wipe this around with. I mean, I didn't have a tongue depressor, but I could have chosen a lot better tools than this. I needed to add some extra E6000 to the back of the strips, so I did that and then replaced the batteries with these heavier juice bottles. We have a delicious passion fruit and a wonderful mango. They're both nectars. I don't know how that's any different from juice. Everything's so fancy nowadays. I just can't keep up. It's three days later and I'm ready to take off the juice bottles and see what happened with the E6000. These are both stuck to the backpack. Who could have seen this coming? Oh no, huh? Oh, what, it's not cured? I wonder if this plastic prevents it from curing for some reason. Well, good news is it completely fails. Might be easy to take off. Maybe I should stop using a blade on a waterproof backpack. Also, this one kind of shifted a little bit. It's at an angle, but that'll be okay. I'll be riding so fast, no one will be able to tell. Keep in mind that the E6000 came off a bit gray, so I think it's pulling off some of the color from the backpack. If you really do care about the surface you're working on, follow the directions and test it in a small spot first. Now to add the lights. I've electrical taped them so they look a little bit nicer. Quite concerned at how difficult it's gonna be to remove these without breaking off the dual lock that's on the backpack. But that's a problem for future me. Take this book out. Which one did I put in? Tarot, the handbook. Practical applications of ancient visual symbols. Yeah, I have no idea. 
First one I grabbed. Let's see how well it sticks. Not very. It's already coming off on the edges. I think what I'm gonna try to do is get through the video shoot tonight, then sew the dual lock to the backpack afterward for permanent use. Where's the button? Now there's a lighted backpack. After several hours in the city, the lights seemed to be holding up fine. But I wasn't riding as rough as I normally do, going down stairs and curbs and all that. And I get the feeling that over time, the backpack's gonna flex and the lights are eventually gonna peel off. I really wouldn't want that to happen at speed on a bike path. So to permanently fix them to the backpack, I think I'm gonna use rib nuts or something similar so I can mechanically attach them to the fabric and there'll be no chance of them falling off. Now this video has two purposes. I wanted to try out a bit of a cinematic approach, then compare that with the place the tripod down wherever and hit record style I've been using. I also wanted to demonstrate that even simple projects can be hugely valuable. A lighted backpack like this could very well help you avoid being hit while riding in the dark. The electronics are straightforward, and with parts in hand, you could easily replicate what I've done here in an afternoon. I love entirely unique, complex projects as much as the next person but there will always be a place for small, incremental changes to current designs. No matter where you are in your making journey, you'll have ideas for things you'd like to build. They may be small, but let me tell you, they're worth creating. It can be intimidating seeing others with more knowledge and experience than you building the next big thing, especially when you're just starting out. Remember though, that each of those people started right where you're at, myself included. Nobody becomes an expert overnight, and the more small things you build, the faster you'll feel confident taking a crack at the big stuff. Whatever you like making, set a start and end date for your next project right now and order your parts. Start planning out the details. The world needs more people like you to share what they love doing. I'll be eagerly awaiting to see what you come up with. Please consider subscribing for more projects and most importantly, thank you for watching. I hold my breath. No, you're still breathing. You're still alive. Yeah. I just don't, I feel like I'm breathing excessively, am I not? <laughs> hey Jippy. How'd you go, buddy? He's a good model. Cut a line, bridge it with the multimeter. Don't need it. Don't hear any of this. This is all extra. My blueberry popsicles. Yeah, we'll, we'll be gone in like two minutes. Appreciate it, thank you, man. <laughs>